If there's one archetype of fighters in Smash that would have the most unfortunate history dating all the way back to the first installment of the series, it would have to be the heavyweight class. Mogrock made two videos documenting the design history and philosophy of heavyweights in detail, which I highly recommend you watch before or after watching this one. And what I want to do for today is delve even further into the class, particularly in the competitive scene. I don't think I'm alone in saying that among all the archetypes, trappers, zoners, rushdowns, swordfighters, jack-of-all-trades, whiff punishers, and heavyweights, the one that collectively performs the worst would be the last one. These brutish brawlers have struggled for decades to garner a measurable presence at higher levels of play, and while things have no doubt gotten better for them in more recent iterations like Smash 4 and Ultimate, the disparity in performance is nothing short of pitiful. For this video, we're going to be looking at why the heavyweight class constantly underperforms even in spite of the improvements given to them. To establish the archetype, unlike traditional fighting games where a character's determining metric of survival is gauged in the form of a health bar, Smash Bros features a percentage, increasing the launch distance of attacks received based on how high that percentage is. Theoretically, provided you're never struck by a decently powerful blow, a fighter is able to live indefinitely on a single stock. Your means of survival is also influenced by an invisible metric, weight, which acts as an inverse parameter, meaning the higher your weight, the more percentage you have to sustain to be launched and vice versa. That means that Bowser, the heaviest of the cast, can on average withstand far higher percents of damage before actually being killed than Pichu, the lightest of the cast. Like all archetypes in Smash, there's no formal acknowledgement of who belongs in what class, but for heavyweights, the litmus test for deciding who belongs to the super heavyweight class would be if they have a higher weight measurement than Sandbag, who has a weight of 115. Going off of this, Incineroar, Charizard, Ganondorf, DDD, DK, K. Rool, and Bowser are all considered super heavyweights. However, due to his weight being practically close to sandbags, Kasuya is often shoved into this category as well with a weight of 113. Traditionally, to offset their higher endurance, heavyweight fighters have very large hurtboxes and are big in size overall. Hitting Bowser or Donkey Kong is much easier to pull off than a Pikachu or Kirby for instance. So it stands to reason that while these brutes can withstand more damage, they're also more likely to do so compared to the average fighter. But if we take into account the notion of there being no quantifiable point of death, that is, you can die as early as 10% or as late as 200, this works in the heavyweight's favor, on paper anyway. As I'm sure you're aware, Rage is a controversially prominent mechanic in Smash Ultimate, albeit not to the same degree as its predecessor. The higher your percentage is, the more launch power you possess, up to 1.1 times more to be exact. 10% more launch power may not look like a whole lot, but if you think about it, that would mean an attack that would ordinarily kill at 100 would instead be able to kill at 91, or an attack that kills at 150 would kill at 136. It does play a big part. Since heavyweights naturally survive well past that point, they can take advantage of rage to augment their already ridiculously threatening attacks, and there's no shortage of empirical data demonstrating how abusable that is. Furthermore, given that heavyweights are less reliant on combos compared to other characters, that allows for a greater use of the increased knockback with little, if any, concern of it compromising vital combos. All they need is a few strong hits to close out stocks after all. With these factors in play, it would first appear that heavyweights possess a monumental advantage over the cast. Being able to withstand high amounts of damage and dishing an equal amount of it back sounds like a good deal. But if that's the case, why are heavyweights considered the weakest class? A lot of that is connected to the aforementioned tendency to get hit more often. In contrast to turn-based combat, taking hits in action or fighting games puts the recipient into a staggered state, interrupting whatever action they are going to take and preventing them from acting for a short period of time. In Smash, this is referred to as hit stun. Hit stun is what lets a character execute combo strings in sequence upon landing a successful attack on their opponent. To account for the game's internal combat systems, damage output doesn't usually correlate with hit stun. In layman's terms, the amount of damage an attack deal doesn't affect how long the opponent is stunned for, and it's on a case-by-case -case basis. How this affects heavyweights is that, like any class in any video game that emphasizes power and durability, speed and mobility are conceded for that privilege. On average, lightweight fighters like Pichu, Sheik, and Kirby possess considerably faster frame data both in startup and end lag on most of their attacks than heavyweights. That's not to say heavyweights have no fast attacks or mobility, some do, but normally speaking, in a contest of raw speed and frame data, they're supposed to be inferior. That's the price they pay for being tankier. As a result, heavyweights are frequently unable to use their attacks as faster opponents can attack them first, and like I said before, when struck by an attack, hit stun prevents you from acting for a short time, during which further attacks are dealt to you to keep you in hit stun. Therein lies the biggest disadvantage heavyweights have. In games that aren't turn-based, speed is with no caveat, no asterisk, the most important stat in the game. With speed, you can strike your opponent first before they do you. With speed, you can catch up to your opponent or run away from them at your discretion. With speed, you have control over the pace of the match. In a turn-based RPG like Pokemon, those who would be considered that game's equivalent of heavyweights like Snorlax, Agron, and Rhyperior are commonly viewed as very strong Pokemon due to their high endurance and equally high destructive power. 
That's only thanks to the fact that they're guaranteed to act the same number of times as a faster Pokemon, and the only thing influencing whether you successfully land your attack or not is the accuracy of your moves, status conditions notwithstanding of course. Now on the other hand, if a Pokemon's speed stat affected how many times they could act, as well as their evasion, that would be an entirely different story. Like if a faster Pokemon such as Weavile, Electro, Dugtrio, or Feramosa could attack twice for every one time a Steelix could act, and if their speed stack gave them a chance to avoid Steelix's attacks altogether, then the viability of slower Pokemon would be heavily damaged. Unfortunately for Heavyweights and Smash, that's the prevailing factor hindering their viability. For all their resilience and might, their poor speed renders them vulnerable to being struck first, and in Smash, getting hit first prevents you from striking back. Entire stocks can be played without a heavyweight landing a single blow while their opponent lands dozens upon dozens. In an effort to equalize the balance of agency, heavyweights do have a few tools at their disposal. For one, faster characters typically have very short range as a result of their small stature, requiring them to be more precise with their attacks and consequently expose themselves to danger to do so. With their greater size, heavyweights have also more effective range and coverage. Donkey Kong's rather long limbs earn him an attack range that would rival or even exceed the range of sorties, as highlighted by his forward up and down tilts. Their farther reaching moves present opportunities where they can preemptively throw out attacks to intercept an opponent's approach. The more effective means of overcoming the speed disparity that heavyweights have is the ability to power through or sometimes outright ignore enemy attacks altogether, the former being known as armor. Armored attacks have the property of being uninterruptible even when being struck, assuming the attack isn't of great power. For example, when using his tilts or smash attacks, Bowser can withstand up to 4 or 8% in damage respectively and still complete his animation. One of the super heavies introduced in Ultimate has a moveset that greatly revolves around armor, K. Rule. Attacks like forward tilt, dash attack, up smash, down smash, neutral, up and down air protrude his massive belly outwards, gaining super armor if any attacks hit that general area which lets him overpower almost everything in the game. Armored attacks have been distributed to heavyweights more liberally in Ultimate to give them a chance to not be completely overwhelmed by faster characters, and to their credit, they are effective at doing so. The only problem is, not all of the heavyweights' attacks should be allowed this property, otherwise that would invalidate the importance of speed altogether, which is sort of the reason why Kazuya's existence in Smash is so divisive, as basically all of his attacks have intangibility in some way, shape, or form. Even with those tools, however, heavyweights continuously have to fight an uphill battle. The nature of armored and long-range moves causes them to only take effect when throwing out attacks. They don't passively contribute anything of value during the neutral game or when you've actually been hit, forcing heavyweights to preemptively throw out attacks in the hopes that you'll either run into them or be foolish enough to contest blow for blow. A skilled player is fully cognizant of this and will never let that happen of their own accord. Heavyweight players don't have the luxury of carelessly throwing out attacks even if they come with armor or long range because their poor ending or landing lag exposes them to counterattack for longer periods of time than a more nimble fighter. Yet at the same time, the only way they can exert pressure is by attacking first, given that they can't exactly play a reactive playstyle against a faster opponent. The armor certainly helps to ensure they have a fighting chance, but it will never and can never fully compensate for that difference in agency, since if it does, it's going to overcorrect, giving the heavyweight fighter all the agency. I don't think I need to explain why giving full control to characters who can annihilate your stock in 3 hits is a terrible idea. So, with all that said, how does this affect competitive? As established at the beginning of the video, trying to find any semblance of heavyweight representation at top level is rare if not impossible. Recently, SkyJ has made incredible strides to break Incineroar through the upper echelons of top level, but even then, he's just one compared to the however many Rob, Wolf, Roy, Politana, Snake, and Steve names out there. Adding on to that, you'd be hard pressed to find more than one or two top players that solo main a heavyweight. For Bowser, it's Hiro and Leon. For DK, it's Chunky Kong. For Ganon, it's basically nobody, unless Rickles is still active, I haven't seen him in a while. For DDD, it's Saki in Japan, as Adamisk is retired. For K. Rool, it's Kirby Kid, and for Incineroar, it's Sky J. is really the only exception to this, which I want to address. The problem with heavyweights is that speed carries far too much equity in a fighting game, especially platform fighters. Perhaps in a side-scrolling fighter such as Tekken, speed isn't that big of an issue, but in Smash, speed and mobility are the primary factors that decide whether a character belongs in X or Y tier. And if you spend a fair amount of time in the competitive scene, chances are you've heard over and over how much better certain characters would be if only they were faster. How much better Incineroar, Kirby, Robin, whoever would be if only they had better speed. All the power and durability in the world doesn't matter if you're essentially a walking punching bag. The abysmal disadvantage states prevalent throughout the class are only so because of their worse than average physics and frame data. And despite heavyweights being the most viable they've ever been, 
Smash Ultimate is the most advantage and disadvantage predicated game we've had since probably Melee. The viability of a fighter is determined by how much of a lead they can build off of one successful neutral interaction and how easily they can escape bad situations, neither of which heavyweights excel at. That isn't to say they have no faculties to build advantage. Some heavyweights have ridiculously oppressive advantage states courtesy of their high damage and area coverage, but a lot of that ends up being made irrelevant when you remember how onerous it is for them to land the first move. The obvious solution would be to make it just as easy for them to get their first move as any other character, right? Yes, and also no. Compared to past games, heavyweights have received a ton of concessions to alleviate that very issue. There's the uh, universal frame 3 jump squad for instance that makes their aerials more threatening, and a lot of them have attacks with a rather fast startup. To name a few, Kirill's up tilt is frame 5 and dash attack is frame 7, very fast attacks. Not to mention his neutral and up air are also frame 7 as well. There's Bowser with his up B and side B being incredibly fast, Donkey Kong having extremely fast grounded attacks, forward tilt being frame 7, up tilt frame 5, down tilt frame 6, dash attack frame 9, and so on. They certainly have the means to box with even the fastest cast members, but that's about as far as they should be allowed to go. By making them any faster, or giving properties that make their attacks break through that of their opponents, it skews the balance of power and speed too much in the other direction. Faster characters are inherently balanced by their elevated risk and reward. Fox, Pichu, Sheik, and so on. They can't afford to make too many mistakes as they frequently explode because of their poor weight. Therefore, in exchange for incredible speed and offensive pressure, the player has to have airtight execution. Heavyweights, on the other hand, can get away with a lot more mistakes on account of their innate durability, so granting them an identical payout to glass cannons fundamentally breaches every possible balance dynamic in a competitive game. It would be as ludicrous as giving Sheik the kill power of Ganondorf or Sonic the resilience of Bowser. The issue is that speed and power is also fundamentally flawed in a platform fighter, which puts heavyweights in a catch-22 situation. To be consistently viable at top levels of play, they would have to be overtuned to such an enormous extent to counter the disproportional equity speed has in Smash. But if such action is ever taken, it flips the table in favor of heavyweights so considerably that by way of human error, it leads to extremely volatile and polarizing outcomes that beggars belief why anyone would ever want to play those faster yet extremely unforgiving fighters. As it stands, many players harbor either ambivalence or contempt for heavyweight fighters in Ultimate since interacting with them carries devastating consequences for either player. They can obliterate your stock in a few hits and can withstand more damage in one stock than you likely could in two. You could play perfectly against a heavyweight from low to mid to high percent, but all it takes is one mistake, one lapse in judgment for them to burn all that hard work into smoke. It's frustrating to fight heavyweights in Smash as it is, imagine if they had even more privileges. Actually, we don't have to imagine it, that's basically Kazuya. He's a heavyweight fighter who practically gets beaten, bruised, and battered all game, but needs only one electric wind god fist to do the same to you. Only the copious amounts of intangibility in his attacks increase the likelihood of him getting it off to an uncomfortably high level. Putting it together, heavyweights can never be good in Smash because the archetype as a concept invites volatility. Volatility that cannot be overcome through skill by either player. Consequently, it would be the lesser evil to make heavyweights bear the repercussions as opposed to basically everyone in the cast. Do I think heavyweights are bad? No, they're certainly more viable than they've ever been, but it's simply not healthy for them to be any stronger than maybe mid-high tier at best. Designing a top tier heavyweight in a platform fighter may very well be impossible purely because of how much power you have to load into them to match the significance of speed, but at that point power will always triumph over speed by way of human error. I may be wrong though, perhaps there is a way you can design heavyweights to be both fair and strong. If you have an idea of that, feel free to share in the comments down below. That's going to be all for today though, so if you enjoyed the video, it would be awesome if you gave it a like and subscribe, really appreciate it. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Varsverum, join my Discord server, and check out my other archetype videos on Trappers and Swordfighters if you haven't yet. But as always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon in the next one. Take care.